Hey guys, so today I decided I'd take a little bit of a break from recovery videos and do a bit of a comparison. Because now I have a Boston Scientific, I have the Wave Rider with the 32 contact paddle. That is my spinal cord stimulator. And then I have the DRG put out by Abbott. It's on my S1 dorsal root ganglion. Um, I wanted to sort of go through the parts that you're given after you have each implanted. Um, because they are, they're similar, but they're very different. Um, for the Boston Scientific, um, it currently sits in my left, uh, you know, below the belt line area. Um, the generator does need to be charged um, every couple of days, depending on the program you're on, will dictate how often you need to charge. Um, I know it may be a little hard to see, but you can see that there's that little guy and there's a bar missing. That means that I need a charge because I never like to have anything less than one bar missing because one bar means about an hour and a half of charging. And to charge it, I have this little sort of hockey puck. Um, it sits in a docking station to constantly charge and you turn it on and it beeps. And then once it lines up with the spinal cord simulator battery in my hip, the beeping will stop. And you'll be able to tell that you're done charging when the, that green light that you saw, when that turns red. All right. And so other than that, there's not much to it. Um, but then when it comes to the DRG, you sort of have a lot more moving parts. Um, my DRG, they call it a generator, is on my right flank, basically parallel to my spinal cord stimulator generator. And then down the center, we have that DRG incision that's about two and a half inches long. Um, but anywho, so you have that generator and that communicates with, you are given a iPod touch. Um, originally it comes with this backing, but I ended up ordering off of Amazon. It costs like $15 in this case is, uh, break proof and waterproof. Um, just, just to be careful because it is easier to slip out of your hand. Like just a comparison, like this thing is huge and bulky, but this is easier to slip. Um, but anyway, um, to use this, all you have to do is push the button, push the button and you are going to see this little guy over here you're going to click on that and then you're going to hit your generator and it's currently connecting to my generator so that they can communicate and then once it is connected you can see that in my case it's just working on that lower left foot area and so you see adjust strength and so you hit adjust strength. I'm currently, they refer to my foot as area one and I'm currently at a 15. Um, during the healing process, that will sort of wax and wane depending on the amount of swelling I have. There's always interference when you have scar tissue forming and all that stuff. Um, I had a little freak out this morning when I wasn't feeling the tingling where I had yesterday, but you know, you gotta stay calm when you're recovering, like things aren't gonna be perfect. Um, and this does need to be charged, but the battery does not, which is pretty nice. Um, I'm really gonna enjoy that because it would have been annoying doing both. Um, so you charge your iPod touch with, you know, your, a normal iPod charger. Um, they also give you something that I, I wish all companies would give you is this is a large magnet and let's say that this or any part of my drg malfunctions i put this heavy weight magnet against my drg generator and it shuts it off and i think it's great to have that emergency like sort of uh backup available and so other than that you know i i can't think of many comparisons i will as time goes on, we'll compare, you know, the experience with the reps and with programming and stuff like that. Um, but I just wanted to sort of differentiate between the two. I know it's not often that someone has both a spinal cord simulator and a DRG, um, but I hope you find it helpful.
So have a good day, guys.